Well, hello. Welcome to E.G. and Friends. My name is Eldon Killian. I'll be your host. Today we will be presenting 2021 The Year in Review, where I will attempt to rank every game that I played in the year 2021. So, uh, this is my second year doing an entire year. I went... Um, if you're curious, you can go back and see all of my videos that I did. I do a monthly video uh, every month uh, where I talk about every game I played that month and I rank them in order uh, from worst to best. And um, one of the reasons I do that is I find it interesting to see where like the new to me games stack up against some, some of my all-time favorites, which I try to play as often as possible. Uh, this year uh, was interesting. Uh, if you're interested in some stats, uh, and that is, uh, here's a few things. I have 611 plays of games uh, this year. Uh, anyway, uh, that is what it is. Uh, that's a little bit less than I had last year. Um, just, but, you know, a fair, a fair amount of plays. Uh, more than one a day. Almost two a day-ish, kind of. 1.75 or something like that. Um, I played with one exactly 100 different people, uh, which is sort of my unofficial official goal that I have every year is I want to play uh, with a with over 100 people. Uh, and I hit exactly 100 this year. Uh, last year I was a little higher than that. And um, uh, my friends were asking me, how do you even know that many people? Well, I have a really big family. I have uh, 10 siblings. Uh, and, and they have, they all have spouses and, uh, have 50 something nephews and nieces, uh, just on that side of my family, um, and, and, and great nephews and nieces. And we get together occasionally, uh, COVID has slowed that down a little bit, but I, you know, throughout the year, uh, people visit and whatever, and tend to get a game out. We like to play games. Uh, so there's that. And then I have just my regular game group. I have a couple of different game groups actually. Uh, that that come in and out, and um, sometimes just playing with uh, random people, uh, meet meet new friends, uh, games get played, and uh, anyway, uh, no conventions this year other than um, had a little one, which is uh, with uh, my main game group, uh, which has not been my main game group this year, uh, <laughs> uh, because of COVID has kind of taken away those opportunities. Uh, but anyway, that's that. I had an H index of 12. If you're unaware of what an H index is, uh, that is the number of games that I've played that number of times. So there are 12 games that I played at least uh, 12 times. And uh, let's look this up uh, for some extended stats here. Uh, if you're interested, I use the BG Stats uh, app, uh, which I know a lot of people who like to keep track of their stats uh, do that. But let's um, have a couple other stats I did not write down. Um, but really quickly, I, I played 166 ga uh, different games. Um, I only came up with 165 when I was transferring the list, so there's one lost there somewhere. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out or not. There's a game out there that uh, maybe isn't going to get there. But uh, when I look at this, uh, I played... Three games more than 25 times. Uh, I have uh, an additional 17 games uh, that I played 10 or more times, but less than 25. And then I have an additional... Um, so I had 20 games that I played 10 times. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a record. Um, we'll talk about why that happened in the video, I'm sure. And then there's an additional uh, 12 games that I played uh, at least five times. Um, I played 88 games twice or more. One of these years, I would like to play 100 games twice. Um, we'll see. And then, yeah, I have 166 games uh, listed here. Um, not sure. I must have missed one when I was putting, putting the uh, list together. But um, anyway, that's where we're at uh, this year. Um, I had 106 new to me games, which is, uh, uh, probably by far the most I've played since maybe the first year where every game was new to me. 
Um, I, I consciously went out and bought a lot of games this year, added a lot to my collection, got rid of a lot of games actually, uh, passed them along to other people. And, um, yeah, anyway, it'll be fun. Uh, let's get started. Uh, I feel like we've been talking a little too long, but, um, I put these in sections. Um, uh, I think there's five different sections and again, I, I ranked all these in some sort of order. Uh, probably the more important thing is I was like, what section it fell into within each section. If you asked me tomorrow and I re-ranked them, they'd probably shift around quite a bit. And maybe the very edges of the sections might bleed into each other here and there. But, um, yeah. The, the, the worst game on here and the very, and, and my number one are, are in the right spot. Everything else probably would shift around a little bit if I did this exercise uh, yesterday. Um, I used a spreadsheet to move things around. That's not interesting. Let's get moving or else it's going to be a super long video. Anyway, uh, before I get too, too far started, like, subscribe, do all the things. I, I appreciate comments uh, or talking about anything. I probably got some things that you're going to hate. Uh, feel free to talk about it. Tell me I'm wrong. Um, or tell me uh, how, how intelligent I am. I also enjoy that. Anyway, section number one, burn it. Burn it all with fire. All of it with fire. And uh, let's get on with this. Uh, for a uh, second consecutive year in a row. I, uh, actually, no, last year, the worst game was uh, Old Maid. Uh, this year, it's Uno. <laughs> Uno was the worst game I played. I hate Uno. I hate Uno so much. Uh, why do I play it? I have people who I love very dearly who like to play Uno, and that is why it gets played. But uh, number 165, Uno. 164, Skip a Bow. I hate this game almost as much as Uno, but why did I play it? Because I love people and they wanted to play it, and uh, I am not a that much of a curmudgeon. Uh, so number 164, Skip Bow. 163, Pizza Party. I picked this up at a thrift store because I thought it looked cool. This is sort of like Tenzi, uh, if Tenzi was incredibly unfair. Um, <laughs> you're rolling the dice as fast as you can to fulfill orders on the cards. Some cards have two things on it. Some cards have five things. Oh, gee, I wonder which one will get filled first. Anyway, Pizza Party. Uh, it's a speed rolling game. They have cool little dice, though. Um, so that's that. Uh, 162, choose your own adventure, war with the evil power. Um, as a game, it's pretty bad. As an experience of reading through, it was basically a choose your own adventure book. Um, yeah, as good as any choose your own adventure book, which is mildly okay. The writing, uh, maybe a little sketchy here and there, but it, it, interesting. It's an interesting story to go through. Uh, the game aspect of it is poor. Um a lot of lucky die rolling, unlucky die rolling, and that's that. Anyway, and I have another Choose Your Own Adventure. I don't even want to play it because of that. Um, just read the book. Just get a book. Choose Your Own Adventure book. Read the book. It's a little less... Uh, um, um, there's not stupid rules that you have to try and keep in mind as you read the book. Anyway, that one. 161 Trial by Trolley. This is one of those subversive games where uh, somebody's a judge and you're trying to persuade them uh, which way the trolley should go. Uh, and basically you're putting out uh, unlikable characters. Um, there's a little thing where you can put on a positive thing on the on your opponents. Uh, um, or your own, uh, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Um there's some funny laughs. Uh, it's pretty dark though, and if you're not into the dark stuff, uh, you probably won't find. You probably won't appreciate it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, what would you rather run over a puppy um, that can talk or somebody who solved world hunger? I don't know. Or on the dark side, you know, um, I I don't know. I don't even. Anyway, it's kind of fun for a laugh. It's one of those games, though. Uh, play nine, uh, a golf game, try to get low score. Uh, pretty random. Anyway, not a game I like. Uh, 159, the game of life. Uh, you know, the only reason this isn't lower is it's got some pretty sweet curb appeal, uh, if you want to, to say that. Uh, the real reason like, I think the game of life is popular, it just looks cool. Uh, there's little plastic things on the board, the spinner, uh, it's got the iconic crappy little Volvo looking cars. Anyway, the game of life. 
158 Connect 4, almost as bad as Tic-Tac-Toe, but it's slightly better. Um, it is kind of fun sliding down the thing, but it's, it is what it is. There's nothing getting past that. Uh, 157 Snakes, uh, this is a new to me game, uh, that I got. Uh, luckily I didn't pay full price for this. I found it in a, on a clearance rack at Walmart. Um, but it looked kind of interesting. I'd heard about it. It's from uh, Big Potato Games. And Phil Walker Harding, who is a direct designer I really like. Uh, but this is a game where um, some people are in the know, some people are not. Oh, no, no, no. That, that, that's wrong. There's a trivia question. Uh, there's a mongoose of truth who is for sure everybody knows is trying to get the right answer. There are some snakes who are trying to get everybody to choose the wrong answer. You discuss it. The problem is... Unless you're playing with a bunch of really smart people who know really specific trivia stuff, it doesn't matter whether they're the mongoose of truth or whether they're a snake. You probably don't know the answer anyway. Really disappointed in this one because uh, I did have high hopes for it with a designer, and uh, it seems like an interesting concept. It just doesn't work very well for me. Uh, anyway, snakes. Uh, one fifty-six. What's yours like? This is a game I picked up at a thrift store. Uh, it's a game where um, you don't want people to know. So you say like uh, it'll be like um, your your purse or whatever, and then you're trying to describe it, and there's somebody who doesn't know, but if they can guess it, uh, they get points. I don't know. Mildly entertaining for about five minutes. Uh, Dog Royal. Hate this game. Uh, the game I love to hate. Uh, basically, uh, Team Sorry. Um, I don't know why I keep playing this game. Of all the dog versions, this is probably the best. But King of the Hobos is still a hobo. Uh, number 154, Hedgehog Roll. This one's kind of interesting. I actually tried to find this one for a long time until it finally became available. I think Game Right published it in the U.S., uh, this was a Kinderspiel des Jahres nominee, so it's, it's a kid game, and it, you know, it's it's for kids, and it's a roll and move. But the way that you roll is you take this little tennis ball, and you roll it across these upside down tokens, and and hopefully the ball will catch them and pick them up, and that's the locations on the board that you can move to as you go through this path in a Candy Lane like style. The gimmick of the ball is interesting, but in the end, it is just a roll and move game. Uh, there's maybe a little bit of strategy where you kind of kind of aim where the ball goes, but uh, I don't know. I gave it away. 153, Exit the Game, Sunken Treasures. People love these Exit games. I have been... Uh, I, I tried one a few years ago. I didn't love it. Uh, anyway, I decided to try one again. Hate. Hated it is all I can say. They're not for me. Some people love these. And if you love escape room games, uh, stuff like that, this might be for you. It is not for me. Uh, this is very situationally a me problem. I don't like these exit games. Um, over two, basically I've tried two of them. Uh, zombie teens evolution. This was a, uh, spill is yours. nominee or a recommended list. Maybe, uh, maybe it wasn't a nominee. Anyway, decided to pick it up, try it out. It's just too basic. It's a cooperative game um, where the decisions aren't that interesting to me. Uh, there's zombies. You're trying to fulfill the stuff. There is sort of like a campaign to it. And I got so far into it and kind of gave up. I didn't want to play it anymore. Uh, yeah, BGG gave this uh, an 8. It doesn't have that many voters, but 8 seems real high to me. Anyway, zombie. Zombie Teens Evolution. There's also a kids version, I believe, which I've heard doesn't change it that much. Chakra. This is another uh, one of those spilled as yards on a uh, recommended list. Uh, it wasn't a nominee. Uh, this is, it's really pretty and cool looking uh, from Blam, uh, who made um, a game I I like quite a bit. I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but Celestia. Uh, they made Celestia and. Um, <sighs> sort of like zombie uh teens uh evolution it just seems too basic you're trying to align your chakras by moving them up and down this board and i don't know just seemed 
dumb to me. Really cute game. The artwork is fantastic. And I, the gameplay just didn't justify it for me. I uh, didn't like it. Number 150. This will probably be... This is by far the most controversial opinion I have. This is the number 6 rated game on BGG. It is the little brother of the number 1 rated game. Uh, ranked game on BGG. Uh, it has an 8.7 rating. Uh, Isaac Childress's and Cephalo Fair's Gloomhaven. The Jaws of the Lion. This is the commercial version. You can find at Target and other places of that ilk. It is the stripped down version. I have not played the regular Gloomhaven. And I am unlikely to based on my lack of joy of playing Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Uh, again, for the people who love this game, I appreciate you. I love you. And um, and if this is a game that appeals to you and you're watching this video, you probably pick it up for 40 bucks, give or take. Um, it's not a bad pickup. Um, it is really cool. The artwork is really nice. Um, the rules are good. Uh, I don't like these types of games is what I think I have found out about myself. And, um, and I think that's that I'll stop justifying myself. But anyway, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Line, my 150th favorite game of this, of this year that I played. Anyway, uh, so this is the next station, uh, section. These are games that I, yeah, um, I wouldn't say they're bad. I just kind of. You know, not great, really. The game Quick and Easy, this is a quick version of the game, which is a game I really enjoy. It'll, it'll be on the list higher. Um, this easy version, it, I mean, it just seems a little too lucky. You can get a really bad draw and just lose really fast, um, especially, I don't know. I don't know. I... I... I tried it a bunch, put it 13 times, and I don't know if I want to play it again. I might under the right circumstance, but I don't know. The game quick and easy. 148 Empire Express. Ah, uh, man, I have Empire Builder was a game I played a ton. Uh, be kind of before I got into hobby games, like got like where I was buying all these games when I was a teenager. It was a game that uh, my family liked to play at get-togethers, and. Um, um, I've never had my own copy other than uh, I kind of made my own print and play. Again, kind of before I got into the hobby uh, like I am now. Um, and I and I really liked it growing up. Um, and I think I still like the game. Uh, I picked up this Express version, which is sort of like a beginner's. It's a smaller board. Uh, there's less things, but it plays pretty similar. Uh, one thing I do like is that they made the cards. They put a little map on there. Uh, showing where you can pick things up um so like it kind of made those things easier but all the other stuff in the express makes it a worst game worst game um i would probably play with more normal rules if i ever played again um but you know it's a game that i really pre appreciated and i still have a lot of appreciation for uh, the regular empire builder this empire express is kind of garbagey uh if you know just go find a regular empire builder or uh any of like the uh, like loon uh, there's like a mars version there's an australian version there's uh um, there's like a fantasy version uh iron dragon uh highly recommend that one i have actually played it but everyone says it's the best version of it and believe them go pick up one of those before this piece of garbage um empire express uh, 147 Sequoia uh, from BoardGameTables.com. Uh, this is a really cool production of a 10-minute dice rolling game. I played this as part of my uh, uh, 10 by 10 and 24 hours challenge that I did earlier this year. Um, and what I'll say, played it 10 times in a row quickly like that. By play six, I was sort of like, okay. I got I get what Sequoia is doing and I played it four more times and so I I'm not looking forward to playing it again ever maybe you know, give me a few years maybe I'll bring it out in the right circumstance um, it just was a little too samey samey over and over again when you play it that many times in a row and um, there were two other games in that set uh, GPS and Mountain Goats both of them I think are better games um, anyway Sequoia 
146 Skull King. This is very similar to, uh, this is a new to me game technically, but it's very similar to like Wizard uh, or other uh, trick taking games like that, uh, where you are making a bid on how many tricks you're going to take for that round. And then, uh, and then you try and do it. Uh, Skull King has like some special cards. Uh, this is from Grandpa Bex, which makes um, like cover your assets and stuff, like which are games that they're marginally okay. They would probably end up my burn in that in the burn it all uh, section. Uh, but Wizards a fine game. I've just played a lot of these style of games growing up and kind of past them, I guess I would say um, at this point. But. Uh, I will. I will say thing. I think Skull King is a little bit better than Wizard. Uh, there's a, some special cards in there that, which I think makes it uh, solve some of the problems that Wizard has. I don't know. Only played it once. But that's how I feel. Uh, number one forty five. Llama. Uh, Reiner Knizia's. Uh, this was a uh, spilled his yards nominee a few years ago. Uh, really basic, almost like Uno, but it's a little bit better. Um, my kids really enjoy playing this one. Um, I. I would prefer playing this over Uno any day of the week. Uh, but anyway, Llama. 144 Robots. This was a Kinderspiel nominee uh, the other day from Pandasaurus. And Reinhard Stupp is the designer. Um, this has sort of this interesting... You're going beep, beep. And however long you say beep is like how far you go down this line. And everybody's trying to guess where you were trying to go to with those beeps. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It didn't light the world on fire. I after I, I did try. I played this about like six times. It says um, every time. I think it was less interesting. So anyway, that's that. Uh, one forty three snake. Uh, I, yeah, one forty three is snake oil. This is new to me, but this is an older game where you're pitching. Uh, ideas. Uh, it's interesting uh, as a party game. Uh, it's good for a couple of laughs. As a game, it has I think it has some problems, uh, which is why I kind of ranked this lower. I would play it again under the right circumstances if I have a bunch of people over who are kind of non-gamers or like family type things. Um, anyway, Snake Oil. Uh, 142 Faces. Another party game type thing. Uh, picked up at a thrift store. And uh, here you get a bunch of faces, and it's like which one's most likely to be a serial killer or something, and you everybody throws in a card and uh, is voting for it. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, good for a laugh occasionally, except for the cards aren't that funny. Um, one forty one code names Harry Potter code names one of my all time favorite games. Codenames Harry Potter uh, riffs on my favorite version of Codenames, which is du uh, Duet. So it's two player or two teams working together cooperatively. Um, and uh, But it has Harry Potter pictures and stuff like that. And a lot like the other ones like this, like the Codenames Disney and even the picture versions, I it just doesn't work as well as words. And since everything's in the Harry Potter area, like your clues... Your, your like available clues all kind of mesh together. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. As far as car code names goes, I love Harry Potter. I love code names. Uh, putting them together didn't work for me very well. Anyway, code names Harry Potter 141. 140 floor plan. This is a roll and write game that I wanted to like so much more than I did. A little disappointed in this one. Uh, I just felt like the rules were a little clunky. It didn't flow very well. Uh, trying to remember the bonuses with people <sighs> seems like always forgot. Um, yeah, I love the idea of this game, uh, but I'm just not sure I love it as executed. Floor plan. Uh, 139, the table is lava. This is just a very silly game where you're chucking cards on a table and you're trying to uh, place your meeples and keep them standing uh, and not have them land on the table which is lava, and they get burnt up. Um, just a very silly game. Um, again, this is actually one I thought I would like more than I ended up liking, um, but it is what it is. R&R games. Um, yeah, Tables Lava. Next. Dungeon Mayhem. 
I was actually a little surprised at how much I liked this game. Uh, I think it, from the looks of it, when they were explaining the game to me, it's like this probably would end up in like the burn it all pile. But um, no, it was okay. Yeah, uh, there's four decks in the in the start in the in the game. They all are a little bit different, and you're just trying to beat up on each other. Uh, that style of game I don't love. This one's innocuous enough. It's over pretty quick. Um, that it lands here. Uh, 137, Gudetama, the tricky egg game. I think the artwork is cute. The gameplay is interesting. It's a trick-taking game unlike any other trick-taking game, but I don't know if the twist is enough to ever bring me back to it after the five plays that I gave it. Um, yeah. I, uh, so, so the interesting twist in the game is if you can't beat the card that's out there you have you must play your lowest and whatever card is your left over at the end is going to be your score so you want to kind of keep your lowest cards uh, and it just um it feels like it hits a gets on a rail where it's just kind of what it what it is and you can't really manipulate your hand that well um enough anyway to make it interesting um anyway good time of the tricky egg game uh, 136 Hanga. This is a uh, Haba, and this is in the same series of games that has Karuba. And Karuba is a fantastic game. Um, I know it's fantastic because I even give it to kids who don't play a lot, and they're just enamored with it. And um, but Hanga, <sighs> it's almost good. It's almost a good game, um, but it just doesn't work right. I don't know if I will keep playing it. Um, or ever play it again, but Hanga, number 136, 135, Roland Wright, the dice game, I got this last Christmas, and I played it in January, I think, and then never again, but gave it a couple of goes, it's just a little too confusing, it kind of has the same problem as, uh, what was it earlier on the list, um, like floor plan, it just, it's almost really good, but it it's like a little too complicated. They added like one too many things. Uh, it's really hard, I felt, to get the combinations. So you're rolling these dice and you're taking the colors and you're putting the dots down. And you're trying to get them in certain uh, patterns of cards that you have. It just didn't work. It didn't work for me. That's why it lands here. Anyway. Uh, King of the Ring, this game is so silly and so dumb, uh, but I had quite a bit of fun with it. It says one play. That's one recorded play. I've, um, I know I've played it more than just the one time. I actually gave it to my school counselor as something to play with, um, with her students. She has, I was giving her some games and, um, yeah, just, you're trying to be the King of the Ring, uh, it has this, um, thing where you're flip flicking these little sumo top guys and as they hit the middle the magnet will click onto it and then the time it has a timer going around it and so you're just and you're trying to flick off whoever's on top so the timer will stop and also so you get yourself on the top so you're on the top when the timer goes out kind of fun i don't know it's kind of silly i got it for two bucks on clearance at target um anyway king of the ring uh, game of things uh, I haven't played some game in forever probably 10 years or whatever but I have it on my shelf and we were having a little get together with some uh, non-gamer friends and yeah we had a lot of fun we played this for quite a while not really for scores uh, this is a game where it says like things that um, make you uh, like what things that make you gag and then everybody writes down an answer and then you try to guess who said what uh, it's kind of an interesting game uh, the Game of Things. Good for a party. Uh, number 132 is Summer Camp. Uh, Phil Walker Harding, again, kind of disappointed me with uh, this Buffalo Games game. Um, this came highly recommended to me from my good friend Jared. And I did not like it as much as he did. Um, so, I guess there's out there. There's people who really like this game. I'm not one of them. Uh, it's a deck builder. I just felt like it was a little too basic and a little too... Um, like the choices just weren't interesting enough for me. Uh, it does come with the, there's different sets that you can play with. Um, the, there's some variability that happens there. I played it once. Uh, I did I played it. 
I don't count it as a play, but I kind of taught myself and I went through an entire game of playing the cards and buying things and whatever just to kind of see how it would go. Um, yeah, I don't, it just wasn't enough for me. I ended up giving it away to a friend. Hopefully he enjoys it more than I did. Um, anyway. Uh, Paleo. Ah, this is a very highly regarded game. There are other people who I know really, really like this game. Found it very interesting. I, on the other hand played through all of the starter scenarios like in the order um i'd never beat the very last one because it made me so angry at how incredibly difficult they made it i was not going to keep beating my head over uh, a rock trying to beat that um but i did beat all the other ones i played them all solo didn't play with other people and i don't know um it's kind of interesting the way it is, you have this deck of cards that you shuffle up. You can kind of see what style of card they are and what's likely to be on the other side. And then you pick them. Uh, and then you try to either overcome challenges or collect resources so you can do things. Um, I just... Um, the big thing that I walked away with this game from is like every single game, I either pretty early on got some things to go my way. And I knew I was going to win. I knew I was going to be able to not starve and, and and be safe enough to get through there pretty early on. Or I knew pretty early on that there was no way I was going to win. It's like I either got all the five points. Very rarely did I ever get like one. You're like trying to get five point five of the things every round. Very rarely did I get more than one and lost. If that makes sense. I either like just got totally wiped out and lost with like maybe one point. A lot of times it was zero. Or I built up my thing and I and I cruised to a victory. And that wasn't interesting enough for me. And it was incredibly difficult sometimes. Uh, um, uh, like the last setup, like once you see how, like how you have to win, I, I think it would just be luck. You would have to shuffle up a deck that was just right in order to win i don't i don't know and i wasn't gonna keep doing it paleo 131 130 airline and see i was really disappointed in this one uh it's a two-player game like akin to like lost cities but just not as good uh in this one and it does a thing that i don't like and i think other people would really like this but it like you play a card and they have powers that just mess with other stuff. And I guess if you played enough times and you knew what was in the deck, um, I, I, it reminded me just a little bit of uh, the Battle for Hill, Hill 218, I think is what it's called, uh, which is a game I played really early on when I started getting into games. And um, and that one, you're trying to create, like, play cards and do supply lines. And I just, it just, there's something about that style of game I don't like lost cities is great because you're playing the cards to your side you're maybe holding off things from other people this one's like you're really messing with the other people all the time or you think you did something amazing and they play this card that just totally screws up the whole thing in this great plan that you had and that just f feels angrifying so anyway airline and sea maybe i'll play but i can actually see myself pulling this one out again and maybe trying it and maybe my estimation will go up i don't know but for right now didn't love it uh, ban all artichokes interesting little game where you are trying to get rid of all the artichokes in your hand or at least come up with a hand that you draw that doesn't have any artichokes uh, a little too much luck in the victory condition for me um, the cards are super cute the, uh, the, the little tin is cute um, the gameplay is okay just felt a little frustrating um you know it might work with little kids uh, or like eight-year-old kids something like that in that range that aren't really like into games but i didn't love it ban all our jokes uh 128 bees this is a beautiful game all the components are really cool the little bee uh miniature things that you have are really cool looking it's just really hard uh, for my brain. My brain doesn't see uh, this abstracty thing that well. And I found it okay-ish. But 
I, I, every time I played it, I was like, I don't know if I like this game. I don't like this game. And then I don't think I like the game. It's okay. I don't see myself playing it anymore. All right. So that was that section. Here's my next one. So vanilla. These are just games. Now we're getting to games that are like, um, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah not bad. Um, maybe not the greatest game, though. So. Yeah, anyway, let's get there. Uh, 127 Quantum. I really liked my first play of Quantum. My second play of Quantum I thought was interesting. I played this in my 24-hour 10 by 10 challenge by play five. I hated it, and then I still played it five more times, and it kept getting more annoying. Uh, the strategy is just uh, you're you're trying to build numbers left to right, getting getting bigger, and then you need to get lower. And the the distribution of the dice, like it's really interesting the first few times you play, but it's just frustrating because like you're trying to get a big number, but the big yellow numbers are on the dice that you already rolled yellows on. And so, or uh, you just can't get the die to roll the thing that you want to roll. Uh, anyway, and it takes longer than it needs to um, for the style of game. Again... I don't hate it. I'd probably, I if somebody said they wanted to play Quantum, I'd play Quantum with you. Uh, but this is NSV. This is from the same uh, line of games as Quix uh, and uh, uh, Quinto um, ish type games. Uh, anyway, again, it's not terrible. Uh, but uh, I think it's playing it as many times as I did was hard on me. Uh, Hand of Fate Ordeals, this is a big dungeon crawler, like D&D type thing where you're going out and you're battling monsters and you're doing stuff, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is a Kickstarter, and it was just too much, too much stuff, it was a really long game, uh, it was like a good like hour of fun wrapped up in four hours, so, um, not terrible, I'd maybe play it again under the right circumstances, um, uh, but yeah. Uh, it just wasn't good enough for me to rank higher than this. Uh, Metro X. This is another uh, flipping right type game. I, again, I play this on my 10 by 10. I actually played this solo uh, when everyone abandoned me at the end of my 24 hours, and I played this 10 times all by myself, uh, which is okay. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's just really interesting. You're pull, uh, flipping all these cards with numbers on them. And you're trying to fill out these train cars and get them through the station. And so there's sort of like this uh, balance of what you use the cards for. And um, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, maybe not one of my favorite uh, flipping rights or rolling rights, but it's a decent game. Uh, number 124, Paper Dungeons, a dungeon scrawler. I want to play this one again. I feel like I would rank it higher if I played it again. But this is like in the vein of like cartographers where you are rolling these dice and you are drawing on your um, paper. Um, Cartographers does it better, I, I think is the only thing uh, um, I could say about it. But anyway, yeah, Paper Dungeons, Dungeon Scrawler. Leandro Pedes from Meeple BR. When I lived in Brazil, I knew some Pedes. I wonder if uh, they're related. Anyway. Uh, 123, Marshmallow Tessa's Reiner Canizia. This is a trick-taking game, and it's super interesting. It's about delayed gratification uh, based on the marshmallow test uh, experiments of the way back in the day where you give a kid a marshmallow, tell them they don't eat it, you get another marshmallow. Some kids can hold off, some kids can't. Uh, the kids who could hold off are more successful, basically. But in this game, uh, you are trying to delay going out w- until more tricks get taken. But if you wait too long... Uh, the last per uh, if you're the last person who has not gone out yet, you get nothing for the round. Um, it's okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything that sets it on sets it truly apart from other trick taking games. It's a really basic trick taking game, other than the scoring twist. Anyway, marshmallow test one twenty two fast forward fortune. This is Friedman Fries. This is part of his fast forward series uh, where there's no rule book. You just you get this deck of cards and you go through the first few cards which tell you the rules and the rules might change as the game progresses um yeah uh, it was okay i went through the entire deck in one sitting um took us like two three hours it was interesting um i don't know if i do it again <laughs> 
it is what it is. It was fine. Uh, maybe I'll pass it pass it along to somebody else. Uh, 121 Lost Cities, the Roll and Write Lost Cities is a fantastic game. The Roll and Write version is okay. Um... I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say about this. Like, it's okay. It just isn't great, uh, is what I think what it comes down to. And because I love Last City so much, I, I just don't know if this this does what it needs to do for me to keep wanting to play it. Maybe I'll give it another try one of these days. I don't know. I didn't hate it. Uh, 120. Where are we at? Um, medium. Uh... Actually, feels a little low. If I rated this again, if I do this exercise tomorrow, this might be higher. Uh, medium is it's, it's a pretty basic game uh, where the scoring again is probably not as important as the as the activity is. Uh, and the activity is two people have cards, they show each other the cards, and then you try to come up with a third word on the count of three. Um, so uh, we actually look at the example where we have firefighter and a river. Let's play it right now. So I'm going to think of a word. You're going to think of a word. On the count of three, we're both going to blurt it out. Let's see if we get the same word. Say one, two, three, water. If you said water, we won. Hey. Uh, and then, anyway, that's the game. Uh, it is really thrilling when you match up with somebody else. Uh, I don't know. I've always had fun playing it. It's a good game. Uh, 119 Rogers of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers. Again, Rogers of the Ganges, a game I really love. The Dice version didn't quite come together. Uh, this game is basically Rogers of the Ganges, just in a Dice version, except for uh, the way the dice rolling works um, and like the mitigation type stuff. One, I think the dice, they like s screen printed them. It's, not, it's hard to tell the symbols apart from each other with my aging eyes um so that's kind of a thing um and again it's not terrible it just rogers of the ganges is better I, I don't know why i would pick this over rogers of the ganges ever so this is where it goes 119 118 unlock the timeless adventures much like the exit series game this is i tried a different i uh, i was ranting about how much i hate the unlock games and somebody, or the uh, exit games, and somebody said, well, you should try Unlock. So I found a three-pack of the Unlock games for a decent price and um, tried it out. I did all three of them uh, at different times. I did them all by myself just because I had a hard time finding another group, and maybe they're better with more people. But in the end, it was just okay. I think the problem is, especially like in one of the puzzles I did, um, I made a bad assumption pretty early on, and it kind of took me to the end of the game. And but I didn't realize it was the end of the game, and so I spent the re rest of the time kind of discovering things that were supposed to lead me back to that thing at the end. Um, <laughs> And that seemed weird, and I never could quite figure out what I did wrong. Um, I just did the puzzle wrong, and it led me to the wrong place. But, I don't know. It was okay. Uh, um, unlike the Exit Series, though, game, this is a game I can pass on to somebody else. Uh, Exit Series destroys the whole thing, so I guess it has that plus to it. I did like it. I did like these puzzles and like the inner, the app integration, uh, a lot better than exit but anyway 118 unlock 117 santa monica josh wood game uh it was okay um but not great uh I, you know uh i'd heard some good things about it i was really excited to play it, it just kind of fell a little flat some of the components it looks pretty but some of the components i don't think really mesh well like the sand dollar things don't look right in the game uh, at least for me, I don't think so. Anyway, Santa Monica, my 117. 116, Biblios, Quill, and Parchment. <laughs> this is another instance of I Love Biblios. Biblios is a fantastic game. Uh, this is a roll and write type version of that. It does have that feeling of Biblios, kind of. Like, it hits the same things. I just... Um, one thing, I never got to play this with like three or four players. And then there's like this weird bot when you play with two. And um, I did not like that bot. I didn't like managing that thing. And uh, it does it in a way that's not fun. 
uh, doesn't add to the enjoyment of the game. So there's that. So I should probably give this a try with like four players and see if I like it better. But yeah, I don't know. Biblios was better. Uh, 115 Sovereign Skies. I got this as part of my uh, on Board Game Geek. I did a uh, uh, convince me to buy a game and I'll buy you a copy and buy myself a game uh, just for fun. And uh, somebody uh, kind of talked this up and it was good. It's decent. It's just a little basic. And I don't know if I played it twice and after those two times I was like, I don't know if there's anything to this game that I'm going to discover if I keep playing it. And so it was kind of fun, but it was just really basic you're trying to move around the circle track to land on the different uh planets to do their uh to do their uh action so you can score the points i i don't know again it just wasn't great it's not bad and i could see some people really enjoying it but for me it's just a little too basic 114 coup a game i've played over 100 times um if you would have asked me five years ago, I probably would rank this a lot higher. Uh, I've just played it so much in the last few years. Um, just kind of lost its luster. luster. This is a great uh, social deduction game, though. And uh, if you like those games and you haven't played Q, you should play Q. Um, anyway, Q. Uh, 113 Prolix. Uh, Gilhova. Uh, I remember when I first started to get, uh, get into the hobby, I heard about this game, and I love word games like Scrabble and stuff or like uh, big like Speed Scrabble uh, was a big family pastime of ours. And I was really interested in this, but I never picked up a copy, but I found it at Goodwill uh, for a few bucks. And uh, I've only done the solo challenges, but I really like it. Um, in this one, you're getting letters, and you're trying to make uh, words with those letters in it, and it could be as big as you need them to be uh to get those letters in there and you're um the challenge has sort of like this it kind of ramps up like you need to be using as many of the letters as possible and scoring as many points as you can anyway prolix um yeah uh, it's pr this is actually pretty good um and i think he has a newer version of it that tweaks the rules it has a different name and I know I've listened to it on his podcast. He's talked about it. And I cannot think of the name. But uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, number 112, Telestrations. This is a party game. Uh, great activity, uh, if we're talking about it. But um, not so much a fantastic uh, like scoring game. Like there's a, there, there are scoring rules. Don't play with them ever. I have the party edition, which has 12 booklets, which is fantastic. I don't know if I've ever played 12 before, um, but it's nice to have the options. And uh, But it's it's telephone. You draw a picture, pass it on, they guess, and then they pass their guess on, and then that person has to draw what that person guessed. And then the next person guesses what that person drew based on the guess of the first person of the second person who looked at the drawing of the first person and then it goes around the circle and you'll see if it goes around. Um, it can be really funny. Uh, we play this with my family just, just recently and, uh, uh, the kids really enjoyed it. Uh, telestrations, uh, 111 super skill pinball for Cade, uh, Jeff Engelstein, uh, whiz kids. This is a really cool roll and write game where it is simulating pinball. Um, it is very interesting. It is uh, engaging. My problem with it is it is simulating pinball, which is a whiz-bang fast thing, and this is slow. Um, and kind of obnoxious, the way the thing works. Like Some people can, um, can get out earlier. Like just They made choices. You're using the same dice, but... You made choices a little bit differently and you got out and the other person just keeps going. They obviously won, but they just keep going and going and going and going because they did a lot better job than you did. Uh, so that's a little thing. It is really interesting, though, and it's probably worth playing at least once to see if you are going to like it. Um, but, again, it always came down to just feel, it feels clunky for something that's supposed to be like pinball. Like, boom, 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 boom. And this is slow. Anyway, Super Skill Pinball 4K. Uh, there is a second box that comes out with some different boards, um, if you're interested. Uh, 110, Whirling Witchcraft. 
Uh, this is part of, uh, I was really interested in a game called 10 from AEG that was coming out. Uh, I'd heard about it. And then they actually ran a Kickstarter um, that had a really fast fulfillment and was expected because everything was already produced. They were just, they were, that was their sales mechanism. And they included this one and 10 and uh, an expansion to a game, uh, Tiny Towns, that I really enjoy for a really decent price. So I picked it up. Uh, this game is really interesting in that you are, uh, but it's more interest, interesting than it is fun, I think. Uh, the really fun thing uh, and the unique thing about it is you are creating this engine of creating a bunch of cubes and then you pass all those cubes to your neighbor and then your neighbor has to put them on their board and if you produce more cubes that will fit on their board those cubes come back to you as points and you're just trying to overrun your neighbor so you can get more points and win the game which is really interesting so it's like your engine your engine has to be efficient at taking care of the stuff that your neighbor's engine is giving you, which should overrun your neighbor to the right. And there's something that translation of like picking on the neighbors and the way that engine works that doesn't quite work for the game. It's a really interesting mechanism. It's a really interesting game conception, but um, I find it just doesn't. It didn't translate to like a really fun experience. Um, I pr I'd probably play this again if somebody wanted to. Uh, it's on my shelf still. Uh, but um, I don't know. I wanted to like it more than I actually liked it. That's the, I think is what it came down to. Anyway, Worldly Witchcraft number 110. 109 Blossoms. This is a two-player game. Um, and it's just okay. Um, you are taking... has like this push-your-luck type thing where... You are flipping over cards, and then if you ever uh, get a um, I'm trying to remember what the luck is, if you ever flip over a card that you can't place in your thing, uh, basically your your turn's over and you can't um, take a scoring opportunity. Uh, anyway. It's interesting. It's good. Uh, just not as great. And if I'm going to play a game like this, again, Lost Cities is just fantastic. And this isn't as good as that. And so, I don't know. It's okay. I don't d didn't hate playing it. Blossoms. 108 Super Mega Lucky Box. Super Mega Lucky Box is uh, Phil Walker Harding. This one's... Uh, he is uh, doing thing here where uh, we're flipping over cards and then you're crossing off numbers on your uh, cards that you have. And as you finish rows and columns, you're going to be getting some bonuses and you're hopefully trying to black out your cards uh, to score points. Um, like the game says it is super it is mega it is lucky there's probably a little more strategy than that title uh suggests but it's pretty lucky but i found it pretty fun uh beyond that but it's pretty lucky uh 107 combat uh i believe newer version of this are called kaching uh, i found this as a thrift store actually years ago and i never played it um but i pulled it out and man if uh <laughs> In my brain, I was thinking this was a Reiner Knizia game because it kind of has that Reiner Knizia feel, but it's not. Uh, Klaus Pelisch and Horst Reiner Rosner. And this is a Winning Moves Germany edition from 2001. Again, there's newer versions. But what it is is you're getting these cards and you're paying money to pick up the cards. And the way that you get money is sell two cards for, and you multiply the numbers together. So the higher the numbers uh, you get, the better. It's it it's really interesting, um, and uh, I should probably play it some more. Anyway, combat. Uh, one of six. Everything on one card. This is uh, one of those cool cards. Ste Stefan Bendorf uh, uh, designed this. But you're rolling the dice, and they have the symbols, and they basically could be numbers. Uh, but you have to take everything that you roll. You can re-roll once or twice. I can't, uh, I can't remember right now. Uh, but you have to take everything and put it on one of your two cards that you're working on. And so you might roll symbols that you can't fit on 
some of your cards. So you kind of have to make decisions that way. And um, if you play, uh, you have to stop scoring a card once three of the colors are scored. Uh, but if you do it out perf right and you get the right roll, you can potentially score everything on the card, uh, which is worth more points. And uh, anyway, it's an interesting game. Uh, I like I like it quite a bit, um, but it's not quite in my really really like uh, situation. One hundred five Bravo. This is the Encore Two Encore, which is an English version for a game called uh, Nachmal, and I think in German this one is called Nachmal so gut. Um, but Inca and Marcus Brand, who are designers I really like, they did uh, Rogers of the Ganges. They did uh, Villagers. Uh, sorry, Village, which is a game I love. And um, anyway, this is a roll and write game. Uh, it's a lot like um, Encore or Nakmal, uh, if you know it by that name. Uh, but this one adds like another die that has like some special abilities. And you can use those special abilities to knock off stuff. I'd probably say it's better than Nakmal, um, but it's very similar. Um, but that die does add a little bit to it, which makes it interesting. I mean, if you like this kind of thing, you're probably going to like it. Uh, 104 Alma Mater. A little disappointed in this game. Uh, this is, um, from that design group I like a lot of their games of. This one feels, uh, it's all about these books. So if you look at the picture on the screen, uh, there's a little cool, awesome components are these little books of different colors. And the whole game is about that, but it's super complicated. Try to make it work for you. And if you can make it work, you're smarter than me. I don't know. I just found it a little too complicated for me to really like the game. I'm a mutter. Uh, 103 Aquatica, um, Arcane Wonders, and Ivan uh, Trzowski. Um Yeah, so you're... Um, man. How to explain this game? Uh, you're using cards and their abilities to get uh, stuff to get more cards so you can score more points. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's been a while since I played it and I'm having a hard time remembering. I kind of liked it. I don't know. Not one of my favorites. Aquatica. 102 Cryo. Uh, man, I wanted to like this game so much more than I did. It was okay. Uh, it's a worker placement basically type thing where you're taking a spaceship and putting it on a on a space and doing the things that it lets you do. And what you're trying to do is get resources so you can go down into this tunnel and set up little colonies. And um, I only played this two player and I didn't didn't quite land for me and then I had some other games I never got back to it to play it with try try it with more players um I really wanted to like this game I, th I think it looks really cool I I think it's doing some things that are unique uh but in the end it just it didn't resonate with me uh anyway 102 cryo uh 101 Fuji Flush is a game I've played almost 100 times um it's silly, it's dumb, uh, it fills a purpose uh, in killing some time uh, with buddies. Uh, if you take, if you have the right frame of mind, it's a good time. If you don't, it's maybe not so much a good time. But um, anyway, Fuji Flush. Uh, okay, next section. I like chocolate. I like all these games. Uh, that last game, I, I said lots, I tried to say some kind of words. Uh, there's just things about those games that I find problematic. Uh, going forward, I like all of these games. I like all these games. All right. Uh, whoops. Uh, 100 big points. Uh, I picked this up at a thrift store a few years ago. It sat on my shelf for a while and I brought it out. It's a Schmidt Easy Play game. I enjoy quite a few of, their, of those games that I've played. Uh, this one is really simple. Uh, you put out these little... Uh, discs in a row and then you move a pawn to the next disc of that color collect either that disc or the disc in front of it or the disc behind it um, and what you are trying to do is there's sort of a race element to it uh, if you you want to get a bunch of discs of the pawns that get their fastest and so if you get more of these pawns, you can get them faster, and then you 
get them at the top. There's also some points for getting like sets of discs. Um, and uh, it, it just does a really simple thing where you're making a decision that's going to uh, affect the outcome. It's also going to affect the outcome for other people. And uh, there are discs that let you break the rules a little bit, uh, take additional turns and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, yeah. Maybe not the most fantastic game in the entire world, but I, I enjoyed it. Uh, big points. Uh, I believe this was uh, been reprinted uh, by BoardGameTables.com, and they called it Bytes, um, I believe is the name of it, which I didn't know at the time. I would have picked it up on the Kickstarter um, because I do I do enjoy this. Anyway, uh, number 9910, I, I mentioned this earlier with AEG. Uh, this is a... Um, uh, kind of push your luck auction game. So you're flipping over cards uh, so you can either get cards or, or the in, income from them. But there's a push your luck aspect as as you flip over the cards, you might run out. but uh, Or you might bust and then you get some different compensation and other people get stuff. Anyway, uh, I, I find it really interesting. I'm going to play it once. I want to play it some more. Um, there is some interesting aspects to the game with the wild cards that sometimes these wild the wild cards aren't as useful as you want them to be. Anyway, uh, I, I need to play this game some more. I, I did enjoy it. Uh, Ten, number nine, eight, sushi roll. Um, Phil Walker Harding. This is a uh, a dice rolling version of Sushi Go, which is a fantastic uh, drafting game. This one, you roll the dice. It says I only play this once. I know I play this at least twice. Anyway, you roll the dice, and then you put them on these little conveyor belt uh, uh, cardboard things, which look pretty cool, uh, and you pass those around. So you draft one die, and then everybody drafts a die, and then you pass them around. And Anyway, uh, you're trying to get different sets and collect different sets and different powers and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, pretty fun uh, sp- uh a twist on that sushi go concept with the dice rolling. So, uh, one little issue with the dice rolling is because you're pulling the dice out of the bag. Sometimes you're you're gonna pull a weird number of those dice, which doesn't really come out. That's one thing about the the card game I really appreciate that it, mathematically it's balanced out really well. And this one weird things can happen with the dice. Anyway, there's that. Lou Island. I played this game a while ago, and then I've picked up a copy at uh, my local game store who must have found them uh, for cheap they were putting them in there uh, they have like a loot crate that they do once a month and but they had a few extras they put on the shelf and i had been looking for this game i couldn't find it anywhere online at least uh, readily available from places that i normally look and uh, i picked this up uh, it's an interesting game it's from what's your game aaron hogg um and uh, basically, you're going to these different spots on the island, and you're playing these cards. And I don't know, the card play is interesting. Uh, there's some special actions, and uh, I find the game interesting. It plays probably a little longer than it needs to, but it's, it has a 6.5 rating from BGG, and it's a better game than that, I think. Anyway, Loot Island. 96 Mountain Goats this is from BoardGameTables.com. This is a uh, reworking of a game called Level X, I think, which is part of the Schmidt Spiel uh, Easy Play line. And um, really interesting. You roll the four dice. You're going to put the dice together and to move mountain goats up the mountain on the number. So, like, if you have a this roll here in the example, 6652, I could, like, uh, I could move it twice up the six mountain and once up to seven. Um, and as you get to the top, when you get to the top of it, then you get um, some tokens that score you points. When you get sets of tokens, you get some other tokens that score you points. Uh, really interesting game. Uh, I really uh, like it. It's pretty easy to play. Uh, goes quickly. Um, anyway, I like these small games. Mountain Goats. Number 95, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. I only got this played once. I need to play it again. Um, I thought it was interesting. I'd probably like it more if I played it again. And for whatever reason, I I played it once, and it, uh, you know, uh, at a time of the year when it was hard to get together with other people, and it just didn't come out again. Uh, but yeah, Jim Phillips, S.J. McDonald, Garfield Games, decent game. 
Yeah, which I should probably play again. But uh, it's pretty fun, just like all the other West Kingdom and uh, uh, North Seed games. Uh, anyway. Uh, Monster Expedition number 94. This is Alexander Fister's. Uh, this is related to another game I've never played before. Uh, this comes from Amigo, and this is a dice rolling. Uh, I only played the... No, again, it's the same. I only, I only wrote... I know I played this twice. I did the solo, and then I played with a buddy. Uh, anyway, uh, what you do is you're getting parties together and um, taking them out to slay monsters. And as you do these things, you're 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 able to roll more dice when you go for those types of monsters. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I I don't know if it's fantastic, uh, but I enjoyed it. I appreciated it. Uh, you can pick this up at Barnes and Nobles. I know it's out there the other day. Number 93, The Mind Extreme. Uh, I really appreciate The Mind. Uh, the Extreme version uh, is basically the same thing with this little twist. It's a little more complicated. Uh, but uh, as you'll see right here, uh, I grouped it with The Mind. They're basically the same game. I think I like The Mind just a little bit better. Um, anyway, The Mind and Mind Extreme. Uh, either one, probably the same situation. Um, if you're Try to pick one over the other. It probably doesn't matter. Uh, 91, Silver and Gold. Um, this is another thing where you're Phil Walker Hardy and you get it right on cards. Uh, but I like this one. It has like a polyomino thing. So you're, like, you're flipping over cards that have these different shapes. You're trying to put those shapes, uh, draw them on your card. Uh, you can hit little combos or like little abilities in there. Maybe combo them together uh, to fill out the other cards. Um, again, and you're trying to get uh, the most points. Uh, I think it's a really clever system, a uh, really cool game, uh, silver and gold. Uh, Res Arcana, this is Tom Lemon uh, of uh, Race for the Galaxy fame. And uh, this sort of has like a Magic the Gathering type feel to it. And uh, But what you're doing is you're getting a, a deck of cards, um, and you get a look through them, and you kind of, and then you shuffle them up, and you go through these cards and you are trying to get the different elements and use those elements to buy the cards and you put these cards into your engine uh, which is going to help you score points and do other things and there's these uh, like places of power that you can that you can get or these other cards that you can buy and it's a race to get points and there's a little jockeying for position and there's and like uh you're your deck and the other person's deck, um, they don't really mix together. It's like you're kind of doing your thing and trying to attack that person or, or just do your thing faster. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting game. Uh, I, I like it. I enjoy it. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't see myself playing it a ton, though. But it's a good game. Res Arcana. Number 89, Decrypto Party Game. Uh, I should play this game some more. I really like games. But this is one where you're playing with teams where you're giving clues to get certain words, uh, get your uh, opponents to say certain words, and you're trying to do that, and you're saying it out loud, and the other team is trying to figure out what those words are. Um, and anyway, to crypto, pretty good game. Uh, I need to play it some more. Uh, anyway, that's where it's at. Uh, 88, Blue Moon City, Reiner Kinesia. Huh. Designer Blue Moon City. Now, Reiner Kinesia, uh, come on. Uh, this is an older game. Uh, the print I have is a newer printing. Um, yeah, uh, pretty good game. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if it is uh, amazing, uh, uh, but pretty good. And I could see myself playing it again. It has some cool little sculpts in there that probably should get painted. If I was a painter, uh, six nymphed from Wolfgang Kramer. Uh, this is his classic card game. Uh, I introduced this to some people, um, who, you know, I don't know how much gamers they really are, but, uh, they came back to me a couple weeks later. They tracked out a copy and he told me, uh, has changed their family forever. And so <laughs> anyway, uh, pretty simple card game, uh, where everybody's simultaneously picking a card and you basically, then you're going to put these cards in number order, uh, following some rules and you do not want to be the sixth card in a row. If you are, then you're going to take the other five cards for their points. You're trying to get low points. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've played this game quite a bit over the years and I appreciate it and I enjoy it. 
Um, so it says I have 21 plays of this game. Um, when I got my first copy, is under uh, slide five was the name of the copy I got. So some of my plays uh, are on that. I've probably played this game closer to like 40 times. Anyway, six nipped. Uh, number 86, Downforce. Uh, this is a uh, Wolf on Kramer game. Uh, same guy who designed the last game. Uh, is reworked by Rob Davio and Justin Jacobson. And this is a really cool racing game where you get to uh, kind of influence the outcome uh, with your cards. Um, but you just can't move the the cars that you want to move. you got to move all the cars that are on your card. And you are betting on those cars as the race progresses. And hopefully you will have the most points at the end. Uh, the, the pathway to victory is unlike other racing games where it's just basically you want to get your thing across the thing. You are trying to get those things across, but you're also affecting other cars as you're doing it. Really clever game. You can pick this up at uh, Target um, for an affordable price. Anyway, cool little game. Downforce. Uh, 85 Chinatown. Uh, this is another one of those games I picked up as part of my uh, Convince Me to Buy a Game, and I'll buy you a copy. Uh, so I actually bought this one, uh, but the uh, person who recommended to me actually already had it. And so we, we passed on uh, on the goodness of somebody else. But um, anyway, a uh, very interesting uh, negotiation game. Uh, every round you're going to get some cards and you get some tiles that are shown in the picture there. And then you have to trade those to get the things that you actually want. And the no the cards rec uh, correspond to places on the board. The tiles are different businesses. And you're trying to group like businesses together uh, to certain maximums for each kind of business type. And score points. Um, it's, it's clever. It's interesting. It's different than anything else I've really played. Um, and uh, I want to play some more. Chinatown number 85. Number 84, Ginkopolis. This is a game I played a long time ago, and then the new version came out, and I picked it up. And um, uh, it wasn't as good as I remembered it. I, I probably would have ranked this a lot higher a few years ago, um, just from my memories of that first play. But um, uh, there's there's things about it. There's things about the solo game that are really obnoxious, like to the point where I don't think I'll ever play a solo again. But, I'll, it, but some of those same problems kind of come up in the multiplayer games. Uh, just the end game, like the way things can swing so wildly, uh, if certain things happen or you get kind of like earlier decisions kind of come back and haunt you a little bit, but there wasn't any way to really understand how that decision was going to haunt you. Um, but it, it's really interesting. Uh, it's an area, there's an area control, uh, aspect to the game. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, the, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's a, it is an interesting game, uh, to say the least. But anyway, 84, Ginkopolis. 83, Concept. Uh, this is a cool kind of word-guessing game uh, where you're using cubes and little uh, tokens on the board to get people to get to the secret word or phrase. Really interesting game. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, concept. 82, King of Tokyo. Just uh, Yahtzee, but awesome with cool monsters still waiting for the version that comes out with really cool 3d mini sculpts and uh <laughs> but uh has these big chunky dice and has these power cards and i don't know it's yahtzee but cool and attacky and and fun i don't know king of tokyo number 82 81 ila dorada a new to me game but an older game uh that a friend of mine introduced me this is a game i don't have a copy of for my own uh, but it's this is really interesting where you're like you're moving um, you're moving with the party and uh, but you want to go certain places you don't want to go to other places and so there's these auctions that run that this you keep going around until somebody wins the auction and but you might join in with other people and uh, to get what you want and to kind of drive up the, the cost of things to avoid going to places that you don't want to go to. Very interesting game. Uh, and who is this? This is, uh, Alan moon, Bruno Fe duty and a couple of other guys who's, I can't read in that tiny print. Um, interesting game. Uh, for sure. Uh, I'm glad I played it. I, you know, I definitely played again. 81 Ila Dorada. 
Hey, Red Rising. Uh, Jamie Stegmeyer, Alexander Schmidt, and Stonemeyer Games put this together. This is based on a popular book series, which I have not read, and um, based on a game called Fantasy Realms, uh, which will come up on the list later. Uh, the knock on this game is I think some of the interactions are just a little too complicated. Um, there's a lot of cards in the deck and not all of them are going to show up and sometimes some of them are very contingent on other cards showing up, uh, which is kind of the knock, but it is interesting. Uh, it's an interesting game that you're kind of drafting. I call it a draft of sorts, uh, drafting these cards to uh, get the combination that you want. And then, uh, next is project L. This is one of the newer games in my collection. Just really cool. Uh, trying to fill out these puzzles and uh to get more uh shapes to fill out more puzzles um really interesting really cool game number 79 project l number 78 nita valier another newer game uh this has a really cool uh auction which is more akin to a draft really uh where you are kind of putting in your bids um for each location to get a card you're gonna get a card from every location but you're trying to bid bid when you get to pick. Uh, there's also this thing where the potentially the the coins that you don't use can kind of join together and make yourself a bigger coin, uh, so you can win more auction and drafting uh, abilities with that. And then you're just building this tableau of cards, and you're trying to get the tableau that's going to score the most points. Uh, pretty slick, pretty interesting game. Uh, Knit of a Lear. 77 fantasy realms i just talked about it we're talking about red rising i do think fantasy realms is a better game because it is not as complicated uh this came from whiz kids uh, i played this a few years ago and then finally got my own copy this year and played a couple times and uh but yeah you get this hand of cards and then you are just kind of drafting these cards and trying to make your hand work and it's sort of the same thing where like you some cards want to be with other cards they don't want to be with other cards and you're trying to manipulate that to have the set of cards that's going to score you the most points but anyway fantasy realms pretty interesting game plays pretty quick um yeah strike uh the dumbest game on the list probably but i always have fun playing it throwing dice inside of a uh plastic bowl uh, in trying to be the last one live. Uh, it's just the stupidest game ever, uh, but also very fun. Strike. Uh, 75 Eco is the first continent. I won this game for free from Blue Peg Pink Peg. Um, one of their uh, Patreon uh, competitions. I made them laugh, and so they sent me the game. Uh, it's a very good game. Uh, it has sort of this bingo-y type element where you're pulling tiles out of a bag and you get to uh, place the uh, land type uh, that's on that tile somewhere on these cards that you have and when you hit a card that does a thing you yell bingo or ecos or whatever it is and and do the thing that that tile lets you do um it's sort of a more complicated version of a game called uh, rise of augustus uh, which does a similar thing this one's a little more complicated. It has some like uh, mappy stuff where you're kind of building a map in the middle and trying to move around animals to get in scoring locations. But um, yeah, anyway, very interesting game. I also have a, an expansion for it, which I haven't tried out yet. But uh, thanks to Blue Peg, Pink Peg for giving me the game. And uh, anyway, John D. Clare, who has another game on this list coming up at some point. 74 Equinox, this is another Rhino Kinesia game and Plan B games. Uh, this is reworked from an older game of his, which I, I can't remember. Uh, but beautiful artwork, beautiful big tarot sized cards, which are probably too big because it becomes a big table hog. But uh, in this game, you're playing cards and you're and then kind of gambling on which uh, uh, suit of cards is going to be still alive at the end of the game. Um, and you'll score points on how early you uh, made that uh, bid on them. And yeah, and they all have different superpowers and just interesting little cool game. Anyway, Equinox from Minor Kinesia. 73 Juicy Fruits. Uh, one of the newest games I've, I, I've gotten this year, or just played just recently. This has an interesting, you're sliding fruits around on, the, on this board to collect more, and as you slide them, you collect 
those resources and use those resources to send out ships or buy uh, businesses, uh, which you can move around on your board to score more points uh, as you collect more resources. Anyway, really cool, interesting game. Not a big brain burny thing, although... uh, you know, trying to figure out that puzzle can be tough, but you can explain the game really fast. It plays uh, nice and easy. Really good game. Number 73, Juicy Fruits. 72, Imperium Classics. I probably do not love this game as much as the general populace does. Very popular. There's also like a, a Imperium, uh, like a mythological type things. Uh, but no, we, I played the Classics version, and it was interesting. Um... I felt like it ran a little long for what it was, and that might have just been us all being newer players and not really understanding the game. Um, all of the factions are different, and they play differently, and they have even different sized decks that you start with. Um, but um, and I'm sure they're balanced. Uh, I, I think I need more plays of this to to really appreciate it for what it is. But anyway, 72 Imperium Classics. 71 Coatl. I'm always looking for a game in the vein of Azul, which is easy and beautiful to play. And this one's pretty good um, when it comes down to it. Uh, it didn't replace Azul for me, uh, but I played this a few times. I'd definitely play it again. Um, but yeah, you're making these little coaddles and trying to make them score according to scoring cards that you picked up during the game. But anyway, coaddle. 70, My City. This is I played most of this last year, but I played a few times at the beginning of this year to finish it off with my son. Uh, this is like a legacy-type campaign. Uh, every three games, you open up a new envelope that has some new rules and some different things, and you end up creating these unique boards as the game progresses. Um, I really liked it. Um, probably never played again. Uh, you, technically, you can play your board when you get done, or there's a flip side of the board that you can play. Um and it's interesting, I, but I think 24 times was enough, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe sometime in the future I'll be, because eh, it is good, it's a, it's a good game, but uh, anyway, My City. Uh, 6 9 Cat Lady, uh, it's a game I, I played a couple, uh, I played a while ago, and I just got my own copy. Um, but yeah, you're drafting uh, these cards to uh, become the most premier Cat Lady of the, in the land, and uh Anyway, it's, it's an interesting uh, card drafting mechanism where you're going to get three cards on your turn uh, and you get them by moving the cat uh, to face three different cards and you click up those three cards. And so uh, there's some limitation in your choices uh, that way. Uh, there's some special ability cards and um, just different ways to score your cats. You have to f- pick up food to feed the cats. If you can't feed them, you lose points. Um because you can't be a premier cat lady if you're starving your cats. That's one thing I know for sure. Anyway, number 69, cat lady. 68, the game. Are you ready to play the game? Uh, the game Quick and Easy was much further back on this list. I really enjoy the game. It's a cooperative game. Uh, it's very simple. Um, themeless. Uh, just trying to get number of cards in order. Uh, and, and, and sequentialness. And um, Anyway, I think it plays really well. Uh, I've played this with my family a lot. Um, anyway, Stefan Bendorf doing good things. And on to my next section. My, oh my. These are games that I really enjoyed this year. These are some of my favorite games of the year. Uh, we're getting there. Not the top, though. This is the second second to the highest tier. Uh, my, oh my. Uh, anyway, number 67, Luxor. Luxor was a... Uh, Spilled his Jars nominee a couple years ago from Queen and Rudiger Dorn. And I really like this one. Uh, it's one of these games where you have a hand of five cards and it has to stay in that order. As you get new cards, they go into the middle. And so you're kind of pushing cards toward the edge. And so you always have a choice of two cards, uh, either left side or the right side. And as you put cards in, you'll kind of, you know, the cards will fan out that way. Uh, you're racing around this temple trying to get your explorers on the tiles um, to collect things, uh, trying to get to the end um, to get some points that way. Anyway, I find it clever, find it interesting. Um, probably not the game I'm playing all the time, uh, but uh, when I do play it, I, it's fun. It, it, it's fun. Uh, anyway, Snowtails, racing game uh, where you are uh, 
uh, have a dog sled and um, you're playing cards to tell which side of the dog sled to go f- uh, faster or whatever. And the way that you can control turns is you create an imbalance. So like one side, uh, one side of dogs is going faster than the other one and that's kind of how you push the, the thing. You know, unique racing game I really enjoy. I got creamed in my playing of it. I haven't played this in a few years. And uh, coming back to it was fun. Anyway, Gordon Lamont, Fraser Lamont, uh, Fragger Brothers, I think is their uh, uh, joint name. And uh, this was the Asmodea version, which is the one that I own. Uh, 65 Crusaders, I will be done. I played this once before a couple years ago. I wasn't enamored with it. uh, But I played it again this October at uh, my uh, game group. Had a little get-together for a weekend. And this came out. And I... I like this a lot more than the first time for whatever reason. Uh, things made a little more sense to me. It has this little Moncala thing as you're picking up the hexagons and moving them around the board. And uh, it kind of gives you how powerful those things are. Um, and then there's a map where you're going out and you're battling people. And uh, anyway, really good game. Um, maybe harder to find these days. Another company that published it, I think, is going out of business. So if you can find a copy, find a copy. Anyway, Crusaders, they will be done. Uh, Seth Jaffe. Uh, QE, this was from uh, BoardGameTables.com. Gavin Birnbaum, this is just the most interesting auction game of all time in which you can bid literally any number that you would like to. Any positive number, I should say. And... um, Want to do a billion? Do a billion. Want to do a trillion? Do a trillion. Want to add a bunch of zeros or something? Add a bunch of zeros or something. Uh, the little trick, though, is whoever spends the most money in the game will lose automatically. Uh, and then the next person who has the... And then of the people who are left over who have the most points from these tiles that you're bidding on uh, will become the winner. You know, it's a super interesting game. Uh, there's a couple things about the game that don't quite work. Um, where some people get at a disadvantage uh, f- through no real fault of their own. But um, I don't know. Uh, I The mind experiment there is just super uh, interesting to me. Anyway, QE number 64. 63 Taj Mahal. This is an older Ryan Knizia game that I finally f- got a copy of. I played this once a few years ago. got my own copy. Very interesting game which you are bidding these cards and um, uh, trying to get advantages in these different suits basically which are on the cards and um if you're ahead of however many one of those when you bow out you get that advantage and you get to do that thing and yeah uh just a really interesting game um a classic if you will uh maybe not uh better known of his classics but it's uh one thing Ryan Knizzi did is he He's really good at these auction games. And uh, Taj Mahal is a really good one. 62 Newsfjord. This is Uwe Rosenberg. Uh, first play of this game. Uh, it's been out for a couple years, but I haven't had a chance. And yeah, it's really good. Uh, really good. Uh, uh, it has like this fishing theme where you're trying to collect fish and do stuff. You're doing Uwe Rosenberg things when it comes down to it. It's not totally dissimilar from a lot of his other games. Uh, but it's different enough. Um, I'd say the game that I've played that I'd probably compare the most to is maybe Glass Road. Uh, you know. Yeah. We'll go with Glass Road. Uh, it's definitely different and it was fun. I This was not my copy. I doubt I'll ever try to track down my own. Because uh, I have enough games like that. But uh, it, it was a good one to play. News Fjord. 61 Royals. This was the most exciting game I played this year, where I won on the very last card draw of the game. Everyone knew what I needed, and I was just drawn blind. And at the very last draw, I flipped over the card I needed, which uh, swung me enough points to give me the victory. But uh, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, kind of, this is an area control game that has like some shades of uh, Ticket to Ride. Uh, with the way that you pull up your cards and get your things. Uh, but yeah, very interesting game. I, I I play this game once every couple of years. I've played it three times now. And it's always enjoyable. I should probably just pick up my own copy. Um, but I'll probably never play it after that. For 
karma's reasons. I don't know. Royals, number 61. Number 60, San Juan, uh, the card version of uh, the venerable classic Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, I really like this game. Uh, haven't played it in a few years, but got it played again and uh, didn't disappoint. Great game, San Juan. 59, Garum. This is a newer game from Ricardo, George, Gomez, and Pythagoras games. Uh, this one is very interesting where you are playing these tiles and you are trying to create... Um, uh, where you're playing tiles and you're putting down uh, meeples and you are wherever you put those meeples you are trying to get rows that have a lot of your color in them and the more color that you can get in those rows uh, the better and you're just trying to score the most points that way uh, I've uh, anyway I found this game really interesting and really good probably a little unloved in comparison it's you know 7.7 .7, not bad but I don't think it has the reach uh, to get uh, the recognition that it probably deserves. Yeah, a pretty sweet game. Garum, number 59 this year. 58, Dixit. Uh, new to me. Uh, I have Dixit Jinx that I picked up, but uh, just never played Dixit, but I found this uh, complete at a thrift store. Uh, played it with some family, and it just a uh, party game, but well-deserved. It has that little twist where he uh, plays these really cool artistic cards, and trying to link up our, your minds with the uh, with the uh, clue that the uh, turn whose player whose turn it is uh, gives everyone, and um, yeah, I don't know. It works well. I, I think it's fun. Uh, Dicks it. I look forward to playing it some more. Fifty seven Dune Imperium, uh, another big hot game this year. Already up to uh, twenty two on the BGG rank. I've actually bought this game, but I bought it for somebody else for. Uh, BGG Secret Santa, um, but I got to play a copy of, of somebody else's, and yeah, really good game. Uh, I could definitely see myself playing this game more, and if I played it a bunch, I it would probably become one of my favorites. Um, but uh, my first play was interesting. It has that Sellers of Catan vibe thing where you're playing to a point, like uh, it was, I think it's thirteen points maybe, or ten, maybe it's ten. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Um, but you're doing things, and there's different ways to come up with these points. And uh, I remember making the comment in the game that I play. I said, uh, oh, I'm probably going to... Uh, I was kind of in the lead, and I, I was kind of downplaying myself. I was like, yeah, I'll probably stall out at 8 and and be stuck there. I stalled out at 6, and then I had kind of retool what I was doing uh, while other people passed me up. And... Uh, just wasn't moving fast enough. Anyway, really interesting game. Dune Imperium has uh, sort of a deck building and worker placement uh, kind of mashup going on. But a uh, really cool game. Uh, hopefully I get to play it some more in the future. Number 56, Gingerbread House. This is Phil Walker Harding doing uh, his best, some of his best work. Uh, I think this game is a little unloved and underappreciated. Um, you are taking tiles, you are placing them. Uh, in this three by three grid, as you match up symbols, you get resources, um, or as you cover up, uh, um, things, you get resources, uh, you can get additionals if you cover them up advantageously. And, uh, what you're trying to do is trying to track these, uh, fairy tale characters into your gingerbread house and get them trapped. I don't know. It plays pretty quick, plays pretty solid. Um, and, uh, I think it's a great game. Number 56, Gingerbread House. 55, Fuse, real time, 10 minute game where you're rolling dice and sharing those dice and trying to fulfill, uh, trying to defuse the bombs with those dice. Uh, really good game, uh, really tense game. Uh, my daughter hates it. Uh, <laughs> gave up in the middle of it, said it was too, too anxiety riddled. And um, anyway, Fuse, uh, I played this quite a bit, really enjoyed it. Played this as far as my 10 by 10. Uh, in 24 hours. Sweet game. Uh, number 54, One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf. I just played this today. Um, great game. Uh, uh, I play this a ton. Uh, works with uh, my young kids. Uh, 9 and 11 years old. Uh, works with my game group. Um just tons of variety in the different roles that you can do if you pick up a couple of the expansions. Uh, anyway, really good game. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. 
Uh, number 53, Llama Land. Talked about Gingerbread House, Phil Walker Harden knew his best work. Llama Land, a little bit better in my estimation. Uh, again, probably does not gain the love that it deserves. Hopefully, this becomes kind of widespread because this is a great game and uh, it deserves to be a blockbuster, I think. Uh, number 53, Llama Land. Number 52, number 9. This game's been around for a little bit, but I picked up my own copy. Uh, for cheap and really appreciate I really like this game uh, this tile lane thing where you are trying to place these numbers that are shaped weirdly uh, by fo following the rules and doing those things anyway really like this game number nine uh, kind of sad it took me so long to play it uh, number 51 fantastic factories played this game a couple years ago and then couldn't find it anywhere but get it on the Kickstarter Got my copy uh, with my sweet little rollout mat and uh, fun game. I really like this. Um, hopefully, I get to play it some more. Uh, I don't love the solo play version. I tried that once. I don't know if I like it, so it probably won't become one of my solo games I like to play um, when I'm looking for something. Uh, but hopefully, I get this out with some more people because it is a really good game. I like the little engine building that goes with it. And uh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, number 50, 60 Second City. This might want to be one, be one of my biggest surprises of the year. I uh, picked this game up real cheap at Target. Uh, and in this game, uh, you are playing a series of five rounds of 60 seconds each where you and your uh, uh, partner are pulling up these tiles one at a time and placing them and trying to meet the scoring conditions that come out uh, randomly uh, in the game. And, uh, yeah... Uh, super engaging, super interesting game. I liked it. Uh, uh, for a game as cheap as it was and for with no buzz and just kind of a basic uh, blind grab I got, I was super pleased with this game. Anyway, 60 Second City. 49, Hadrian's Wall. This was my BGG Secret Santa gift this, this year. And um, this is from uh, Garfield Games who do the uh, West Kingdom uh, series. This has the artwork that's similar to like the Raiders of Scythia, which is like the Raiders of North Sea reboot that they did. Um, but this one, I've only played solo. I played, did play it ten times. And I really enjoy it. I don't know if I'd ever introduce this to somebody else because I feel like it'd just be the exact same experience, just waiting for somebody else to do their thing. Um, basically what you're doing is you are flipping over some cards, collecting some resources, then using those resources to combo together other things that will give you more resources. Uh, so you can buy different things and score points and, uh, it's a very interesting, uh, puzzle and the puzzle is a little bit different every time, but you know, same basic idea every turn. Anyway, uh, I really like this game. I, you'll probably see me playing this some more in the future. Anyway, Hadrian's Wall. Number 48, Diamonds. Uh, Trick-taking game for Mike Fitzgerald and Stronghold Games. Uh, again, I'd heard about this game a long time ago, and uh, it, it piqued my interest. I uh, just never got my own copy. And then I found uh, one of the f first edition, uh, first runs at a thrift store and picked it up and played it with some family and really, really, really enjoyed it. I, I think the interest that I had in it earlier was very warranted. Uh, as far as trick taking game goes, it's a really good one. Uh, it has some uh, interesting twists and powers in there that make the game really shine. And uh, highly recommend it. If you like trick taking games at all, this is probably one to check out. Diamonds. 47, the Castles of Tuscany. This is Stefan Feld and a uh, follow up of sorts to Castles of Burgundy. Uh, it has um, some basic things that are the same. Uh, but it definitely plays completely different. It's def definitely its own game. Uh, not as good as Castles of Burgundy, but I did enjoy it. I, I thought it was interesting. It plays fast. Uh, and I don't think it has a potential for as much as, uh, like kind of brain burning and, uh, AP that, that can come, sometimes happen with Castles of Burgundy. I don't think that's really possible in this game, uh, as you play your cards, uh, in pairs and uh, anyway good game castles of tuscany 46 furnace uh this is a great little uh engine builder uh auction game where you are uh in the auction you're playing these discs numbered one through four 
Uh, if your number uh, does not win, then you get to do a special ability or gain a resource based on that number, and uh, which is kind of a cool little twist of the game. But uh, I really like this one. I'm really happy with it from Hobby World, Ivan Lashin, and uh, Arcane Wonders in the U.S. has brought it over. Anyway, good game. Furnace. 45 Cartographers. Uh, this is a game I actually play online a ton. The app is fantastic. Um, but but uh, I don't count app plays in my play number uh, for whatever reason. But um, anyway, Cartographers, really good game. Uh, you, it's a uh, flipping right where you're flipping cards, and they have different uh, land types and shapes, and you're putting those shapes on your board, and you're trying to fulfill the scoring uh, um, the scoring cards that are out during the game and they kind of rotate through and you see them all ahead of time so you can think ahead so you're kind of uh, doing that there's little monster uh shapes that come out that mess up what you're doing really good game really i really really like this game number 45 cartographers 44 point salad from aeg uh this is a great game uh this is a great game for uh um anyone I, I play this with some younger kids i play with adults uh it just works really well you, uh your decision space is pretty simple but also uh you have enough choice there where it's interesting what happens is you have six cards really nine cards to choose from you either take two ingredient cards uh, of six that are available or take one of the point squaring cards of which there are three available and um and then you score with the ingredients that you picked up versus the uh, point square cards that you grabbed. Great game. I uh, really like it. Uh, number 43, Kubitas is another John D. Clare game uh, that I played from AEG. Uh, this is, I, it kind of it has a lot of similarities to a game called Automobiles, um, but it does it better. Uh, you are racing around this board, uh, you are buying cubes. Uh, that are dice that um, so you roll those have some uh, push your luck element that's just so cool to me and uh, anyway I really like this game Kubitos my number 43 of the year 42 for sale Autorama um, spoiler alert for sale their basic game is on this list also a little bit higher um, and then I thought really hard about this and I actually just played this the other day again and um for Sale Autorama is a reworking of For Sale in which it adds another round to it. When it comes down to it, I'll talk about For Sale a little bit more when we get there. I think I like the original version better, but I also think this is a better game. And I think I think I know, I know that's a contradiction, but what it comes down to is For Sale fits a, a spot, a sweet spot that's perfect. It is a perfect 10 to 15 minute game. This game, the Autorama version, does not play in 15 minutes. It plays in closer to 30. It has some cool powers and some things that, that make a difference. It just complicates the game a little bit in a good way but it makes the game something that for sale is not. And I, anyway, for sale Autorama, really good game, and in some ways is better than the original, but I rank it lower. However, that makes sense. I don't know. For sale Autorama. 41 Seasons. Uh, this is a game that has been on my shelf of shame for several years. Uh, I bought this, uh, man, it's probably at least five years ago. And I looked at it, I read the rules, and I just never got it out. And finally got it played a couple times with my buddy. Uh, this was ranked number 222 on BGG. Very well-deserved ranking, I think. A very good game. Um, you are going through this the seasons, uh, and every season has some slightly different... Um, you're going to see different things. Uh, there's a slight change to like some conversions there uh, from season to season. Uh, but you are playing these cards and then uh, making these cards work for you to uh, do some awesome stuff. Anyway, um, it's not necessarily a style of game that, I, that I'm super into, but it does it really well and uh, made, made me enjoy it and appreciate it. Number 41, Seasons. 
All right. Now, here are my best games that I played this year. This is the straight cash money. These are great games. All of them. Ohanami. Uh, played this 11 times. Stefan Bendorf. Uh, some of the same concepts in the game, but instead of a cooperative, this is a competitive game in which you are drafting cards and placing them in in a numerical order of sorts. Uh, it's plays fast the scoring is fairly simple uh your decisions are not too hard but you definitely have to think uh there's some hate drafting that can happen uh if you're paying attention and it's otherwise just a really really good game anyway number 40 ohanami uh number 39 merv the heart of the silk road i've only played this once and i should really play it again because i really really liked it um again i feel like this game should get more love it's probably going to stall out where it's at on BGG and it's probably going to backslide from here but uh, in the rankings. But um, it's just such a neat little game. Um, you're going to take one of four spots each turn. And there's a, you know, and turn order totally matters. Uh, you're trying to link together. Uh, make things a little more powerful by by working advantageously. Uh, you're trying to protect the city, but protecting other people can be more valuable than protecting your own stuff. But with those drawbacks there, because you might lose your stuff. Ah, just so cool! Such a cool game. Merv, the heart of the Silk Road. Thirty-eight Lorenzo Magnifico. This is a game I played a couple years ago. Uh, I finally got my own copy. It sat on my shelf for several months until I just brought it out just recently. Man, it's fantastic. Uh, I don't think I realized how good it was from my play a couple years ago, but yeah, really, really good game. Uh, I know a new version just came out that's kind of expensive, a lot more expensive than the version I got, but um, really good. A+. Plus. Uh, 37 Bonfire. This is Stefan Feld. This is one of his uh, new games this year, or last year, technically. I got it this year. And um, anyway... Uh, it does some really cool things. You are have some positional things that you're doing on your little personal board to get your action tokens. And you use those action tokens to do all these kind of different things. Uh, like a lot of Stefan Feld games, there's a point. It's a point salad. You are uh, taking all these different elements, and everything will score you points somehow. Uh, and you're just trying to do it as efficiently as possible and be cool. Anyway, number thirty-seven, bonfire. Number 36, Targi. Great little two-player game. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, just got my own copy this year, and so got played a couple more times. I played this online a number of times, which isn't reflected in the number. Uh, but, yeah, great game. Targi. Uh, two-player extraordinary. One of those uh, from the two-player Cosmos line. Uh, one of the better ones. Number 35, Underwater Cities. Vladimir Suhi, one of my favorite designers. Uh, this is a really fantastic game. The way the card play and the actions, uh, the way you choose your actions is pretty neat. Um, uh, anyway, it's a really good game. Maybe not my favorite uh, Vladimir Sushi game, uh, but really good one. Uh, Underwater Cities. Number 34, Al Gaucho. I'm probably the only person in the world who would even dream of ranking it this high in their personal rankings but i really do like this game it's a dice drafting game uh where you are putting these little cowboys out on uh on cows and then you get those cows into your personal supply and you're creating a line uh but when you get a cow that has a number that interrupts the line then you sell off the rest of the herd and you start a new one and i don't know i just i find this game very interesting it does something that i don't think any other game does in my collection and uh yeah i really i really like this game number 34 el gaucho number 33 lost ruins of arnak another big game this year uh came out last year but uh pretty hot this year and yeah it's a really good game i really appreciate it it's from a design team called min and elwin which i'm sure are code names or uh, nom de plume and uh yeah it's really good it's uh from cg and they did a fantastic job with the production. Uh, it has this cool kind of deck building thing and action selection that kind of works together. Uh, really cool game. Lost Runes of Arnak. 
Number 32, Carpe Diem, Stefan Feld. This game's a couple years old, and I really like this one. Uh, I, like, I really like how uh, every round you are kind of you're competing for what you can score. So you're trying to build a board that's going to score you points, but even to score those points, you have to get in that turn order to make sure you can get the point scoring uh, locations that are going to best benefit you each round. And, uh, yeah, really cool game. Plays very fast. Uh, it's, a, it's a good 45-minute game, uh, which I really appreciate games that can do that. Um, 31 Hollertau. Not a 45-minute game. This is Uwe Rosenberg doing farming stuff. And I uh, really like this one, uh, uh, the way it works. Um, maybe not his best game ever, but I really did enjoy uh, how this worked out. Um, Caverna is probably still a better game. But um, I don't own Caverna. I do own Hallertau, and this, I liked it. Uh, 30, Azul, the stained glass of Sintra. Um Azul, just fantastic game. The Stained Glass of Sintra is a really great implementation of that drafting system. Uh, really cool components. Um, really good. Michael Kiesling doing great work. Number 29, Rogers of the Gun. He's already said how much I love this game. Inca Marcus Brand uh, doing awesome things. Uh, the cool thing in this game is you're using dice, and there are two scoring tracks. One of them is money, and one of them is points. They move in opposite directions, and the game is over when they cross. And so you can focus on getting tons of money to move that side faster, or you can focus on getting lots of points, move that side faster. And um, But it is what it is. It's awesome. I really... I really, really like this game. Uh, hope to play it some more in the future. 28, no thanks. Uh, all-time favorite game. Another game I've played over 100 times. And I played as part of my 10 by 10 in 24 hours. Really appreciated this one. Uh, it does what it does. Uh, um, you either take the card or put a token on it. And it keeps going around until somebody takes the card and takes all the tokens. Cards are bad. But it kind of gets kind of get some cards and hopefully they work advantageously to you anyway no thanks number 27 newton uh, another game uh, i picked up at the same time as lorenzo il, il magnifico it's part of that same kind of design cluster um of people that kind of uh work together i think and simon luciani looks like was the main main guy on this one and i really liked it um it does a lot of things similar to uh Voyages of Marco Polo, but in a more straightforward way, and uh, I really appreciated that. And it, but it's fun; it's its own thing, and just a really good game uh, when it comes down to it. Number twenty-seven, Newton. Number twenty-six, Similo. Man, I just really like Similo. I, <sighs> great game. I've played it a ton. I'll keep playing it. Uh, the Spookies is the last set I picked up. Um, these are probably sets I will keep buying as long as they make them. Um, great, uh, like, uh, uh, it's not really a word game, but it's like sort of an association game. It's cooperative and it's, I don't know, really like it. 25, Praga Kaput Regni, Valada Marsuhi. Uh, I think this is the highest ranked, ranked game for me this year that I played. And this is one of his newer ones. And I really like uh, the design aesthetic. I really like the art. Um, everything about this game is just really cool. It has this interesting little wheel, which I think doesn't quite work as well as it should. Maybe it, I'm too dumb for it or something. I always mess up counting the turns, though, uh, for whatever reason. But I really like the the way those act way you're picking those actions. Uh, kind of similar to some other games that are going to come up and and that I've already talked about. But, uh, yeah, really cool game. The little egg components are sweet. 24, Carcassonne, all-time favorite game. One of my all-time favorite games. I uh, got to play this year, so it ends up on the list pretty high. Uh, Carcassonne, great game. If you don't know anything about it, you should play it. 23, Cascadia. This is one of my favorite games of 2021, uh, new 2021 games. Uh, just really awesome. Randy Flynn did a fantastic job. Uh, this was a great job of making a pretty uh, focused uh, decision space uh, where you are taking a token and taking a tile 
and placing that tile and the token into your personal space uh, to create up ec ecosystems uh, as big as you can and placing animals in advantageous scoring positions which are changing from game to game. A really cool game. Uh, there's some mitigation that can happen. Uh, works so smoothly and so awesome. Uh, great game. Cascadia, number uh, 23. Number 22, Space Space. Uh, John D. Clare, again, showing up on the list. A really good game. Uh, I really appreciate this. I have some friends that like it. And um, this has the cool, like, Catan thing where you can get resources on other people's turns uh, as you build up your, um, your engine. And uh, I like that there's multiple paths to victory here. Uh, the main way is trying to score points. There's also a card that can come up called the You Win card. And if you can fulfill the requirements of that card, you win automatically. And that's that. And I love it when that card comes into play because it makes it such an interesting gameplay. Um, number one, Azul. Uh, so I do like Azul better than the Stained Glass of Sintra. I'll play both of them anytime, but uh, I, I really like the simplicity of the original Azul. The Stained Glass of Sintra, the mechanism, the way that you score points is not quite as interesting to me. But yeah, I really like Azul. I'm not going to talk about it some more. You should play it. 27 Wonders Duel. Uh, I don't play this as much as I probably should. It's a really good two-player game. And uh, when I have two players, I should bring this game out more often because I really do enjoy it. Um, I actually don't own Seven Wonders, the, the basic game. Um, but uh, this dual version is pretty cool. And um, it does what the big game does in a more concise way and does it with two players in a really interesting way that I don't think any other game really does. Um, anyway, Seven Wonders Duel. Number 19, having an ale. Man, I, I didn't play this game for a while. I played it a bunch when I first got it. Uh, I haven't played it for a little while. Pulled that again and just reminded me that it's so good. It's such a good game. And, you know, it's ranked number 277, but I feel like that's low. I feel like people are underrating how cool and how good this game is. Anyway, number 19, Heaven to Nail. Number 18, Twanton Suyu. I am probably the minority in here. Uh, Board and Dice uh, came out with Twanton Suyu and Tekenu last year. Uh, they were both at pre-order at the same time. I got both of them. Because I'm a big believer in these uh, tea games uh, like Zulkin and um, uh, and the other one. I just pre-ordered Tabanusi, uh, which is from the same uh, designer. And I think Tekhenu is more highly regarded than Tuatinsuyu. Uh, I disagree. I, I've played them both. I think I've played them both three times exactly. Uh, I prefer Tuatinsuyu. I It is complicated, though. And... Uh, I don't always want to play it because I don't always want to explain it to other people. But I think understanding the game and playing it, it's one of those things where like the first time I played it, I was like, man, there's so much stuff. The second time I played it, I was like, this is really fun. The third time I played it, I was like, this is amazing. And then the person I was playing with couldn't come back for a long time, and I didn't want to teach it to anybody else. Um, but... Really cool game. I really enjoyed it. And um, again, this probably does not get the love it deserves. I, I think it's better than Tech Hanu, um, uh to compare the two just because they do. They're definitely their own games, but I like this one. I like Tech Hanu too. Don't get me wrong, but I like this one better. 17, Witchstone. This is one of my favorite games of this year, of 2021 games. And um, uh, it's Reiner Knizia, Martino Ciacchieri, and this does some amazing stuff. It does some stuff that Feld would do, uh, but does it sort of like in a really straightforward way that makes sense and works really well. And love it. Love this game. 16 Grand Austria Hotel. Uh, I played this game a couple years ago, and then finally they ran a Kickstarter uh, for a fancy new edition. Probably, the, I think it's the most expensive game I've ever bought. Um, but it's so awesome. I haven't even tried the expansion yet. I... Um, but it's such a good game. Uh, I need to get some more plays of it. Uh, so good. Uh, Virginio Gigli and Simone Luciani doing fantastic things here. Number 15, Modern Art. Uh, Reiner Knizzi, I love his auction games. This is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, I will always love this game. Uh, the very first time I played it, on the very second turn, the very second auction, I just started giggling in with joy and mirth and laughter. I love this game. Modern art. Number 14, For Sale. 
talked about previously with Adorama, again for sale just hits a sweet spot that I think is unsurpassed by another game of this type for sale. Uh, number 13, Just One. Great word game. Love this game. Uh, it is fantastic. I, but, hold tight. Number 12, Isle of Cats. Uh, another great game, new to me this year. Uh, came out in 20, 2019, actually. Uh, I just love the artwork of this game. I love how it plays. I love uh, everything about it. Fantastic game. Number uh, 11, Santiago. Uh, this For a long time, this was my number one most favorite game in the entire world. And I still love it a lot. And I have some new family or uh, friends who uh, really have taken a shine to it. So I've gotten to play it a few times this year. And um, anyway, uh, if anybody's looking for a game to reprint and... Uh, this one could take user reprint. Uh, it's kind of out of stock at the moment. Number 10, Istanbul. Istanbul. I love this game. I'm just loving it more and more every time I play it. As uh, uh, There is something about the rhythm of that circular like dropping off uh, workers and then picking them up and doing the action and trying to find that sweet... Uh, that sweet route that's going to be efficient so you can do all the things to score the gems and do well. Uh, great game. This was a Kenner Spiel nominee or winner a few years ago and uh, highly deserving. Very good game. Number nine, Quacks of Quedlinburg, another Kenner Spiel nominee and winner, I think, I believe, uh, from a couple years ago. And it was a big hit. Um, I played this at BGG Spring uh, when it was on the Spiel. Uh, Spiel des Jahres tables that they have there, and I I think I played like 10 times that weekend. I just loved it. Uh, when I finally got my own copy, I've been introducing it to people. I, I love this game. I have not sprung for the sweet little uh, tokens that you can get, um, but I probably should. I, I do really like this game. Anyway, number nine, Quacks of Quedlinburg. Number eight, So Clover. I didn't say a whole lot about Just One because So Clover has almost killed it for me. I love Just One and So Clover. I just really enjoy it. It's a cooperative word game uh, in which you are putting these four cards um, that have four words on them uh, into each, into this thing. And the two words that are facing out, you are trying to come up with a clue that connects the two. You do that four times and then everybody else will look at your four cards and then plus one card which has some distractor information on it and they try to put them back in the right position this just works well works well with two works well with three works well with four works well with five works well with six works well even if you've used all six of the components and people are just standing around looking at the table and trying to help you out it works well this is a fantastic game uh best game of 2021 in my estimation uh love it great game uh, number seven, Castles of Burgundy, just one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, Steffenfeld's masterpiece, uh, his best game. Really enjoy it. I uh, got some plays of it. If you haven't played it, you should play it. Uh, number six, Yokohama. This game is just getting better and better for me as I play it more and more. Um, or you know, I played it for the first time a few years ago, and I've uh, you know, it just it just keeps coming out every year, and I. I love it more and more as I play it. It's a great game. Number six, Yokohama. Number five, The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. This was a... I played this last year, so it's not a new-to-me game, but I've played it quite a bit, and this is just the greatest trick-taking game of all time. Um, the thing that sets it apart it is cooperative, so instead of a competitive trick-taking game, you are doing trick-taking in accordance uh, trying to fulfill these different goals throughout the game. And it's just fantastic. Anyway, the crew of the quest for Planet 9. Number four, a Feast for Odin. Uwe Rosenberg's just super great game. Has some polyominoes. It has some worker placement. It, uh, just so good. Such a good game. Um, if you haven't played it, you should play it. Um, I don't know. There's so many good words out there. You can find them. Feast for Odin. Expensive game. Number three, Cunningham's Duet. And I thought really hard about this because So Clover I loved so much. I love Cunningham's Duet even more. 
even though I hate the Harry Potter version, which is basically the same game with Harry Potter stuff, this game works so well with two players. Giving each other clues back and forth, trying to get things. It has just... I, I really like code names, but I didn't even play it this year. Um, because So Clover and Just One have kind of replaced it for that mode of game. But Codenames Duet, great two-player word game, works so well. Uh, I don't know what to say more. Codenames Duet. I love it. Number two, Great Western Trail. Last year, this was my number one game of the year, uh, or of all time, when I do my all-time list. And uh, I really love it. I just didn't play it very much this year. And um, my number one game kind of overtook it. But uh, just a really solid game. There's a new second edition. Uh, I haven't played it, but it looks really pretty and nice, and so it's the one you should buy. I know there's a few changes on the board, uh, but I think gameplay is basically the same. Uh, and then number one, It's a Wonderful World. Um, I play, This was the game I played the most last year. <laughs> uh, and I didn't play it nearly as much this year as I did last year. I played it over 100 times last year, but I've, I've been pulling it out recently. And I got an expansion for it and uh, added to it. And that expansion just adds some really cool stuff to it. And um, I really like this game. Uh, I don't really consider myself a solo gamer, but I solo game occasionally. And this and this is my solo game of choice. This is uh, I love the <laughs> I love the way the solo game plays. I also like how this game plays with two or three or four players um, and how the draft works. I think it's just really awesome. Anyway, my favorite games of the year. All the games I played this year ranked in order. You kind of see that. Um, anyway, this I've been rambling for a long time. Like, subscribe, do all the things, make some comments, tell me why, why I'm dumb. Go ahead. But um, I need to, I don't know, come up with a tagline of some sort. Uh...